few weeks ago, I received three American one-key flutes, um, one by Weigand from Philadelphia, probably around 1830, one by William Hall and Son, 1820 to 1840, and one by Pelobe, uh, which was probably between 1830 and 1850. The, the three flutes uh, were especially interesting to me because they were so similar to one another. Uh, they, they're all one key flutes, they're all at high pitch, uh, at the American version of high pitch, which is usually around 448. Um, and, uh, and they have a, uh, a particular uh, thing in terms of tuning, which I had found on other American flutes, and it, it, it initially caused me to kind of dismiss these instruments. Uh, the main idea is that these flutes don't really have an F natural. It's really, truly a flute in, in, made to be in D major, and, and playing in D minor is, is uh, really a very difficult thing. So I thought about these, and when, when I had seen these flutes in the past, I had always said, well, this is a crappy flute, because you can't play an F natural on it. Um, it's just crappy. But what I started realizing as I thought about these flutes was that they're actually made to play a certain kind of music and they're made to be played by a certain kind of flute player. <clears throat> and I suspect in 1830 in America, this is what most flute players play. Uh, as I was thinking about demonstrating these flutes, the question of repertoire came up and I did a quick survey to see what I could find about the earlier American flute repertoire. And as I suspected, it's almost entirely playing tunes. There, are, um, in, in the books, you'll find, you know, mostly American, Scottish, Irish, English tunes, uh, an occasional little simple piece by Mozart, uh, or by some other composer of the previous uh, century. Even Beethoven is sometimes in there, just with these little, very, very simple little tunes. There is really very little uh, extensive flute music that I found that is equivalent to the music that was published in England. Um, the sort of average flute player in England would have been at this time playing uh, some of the easier pieces by Nicholson and uh, books like the uh, um, Alexander's Select Beauties, which came out in many volumes and had many, many tunes just for solo flute, <clears throat> many of them by Nicholson and people like him. They're all ornamented fairly elaborately. Uh, if you look at the American tune books, they tend to be very, very simple. Um, one of the books I looked at was the Foster's Social Orchestra. And in that book, all of the tunes are very simple. <clears throat> there are some pieces for ensemble. Uh, usually these are not for flute ensemble. And so they that might have kind of an easy flute part and then the other parts sometimes are a little more complicated. And there are a few pieces for multiple flutes, which again are very simple. So I ended up um, picking some pieces um, from uh, a set that was recommended to me by Tom Moore, which is the Blake's Selected Beauties. This, this was basically an American version of the Alexander's Selected Beauties or similar things that were published in England. Uh, so they are all tunes, but they're ornamented especially for the flute. And, um, and they're adapted quite well. Some of them I thought were really kind of sweet, nice pieces. So the, the two pieces that, uh, that I picked from that book, the first one is called Ye Banks and Braes of Bonnie Doon, uh, and the arrangement for flute is by Soust. He was a famous flute player who migrated to the States from Germany. Um, interestingly, uh, this piece has a minor section in the middle, a very short minor section with F naturals in it. <clears throat> and when I first recorded the piece, 
I didn't realize that it had a B flat and I played the whole thing with F sharps, which sounded perfectly good because it was really the same music as is used elsewhere uh, with one sharp. Uh, so then I had to go back and record using these flutes that are very hard to play in F natural, I had to record that section and you'll hear um, it, it's, it's like vaguely acceptable, but um, it's, not, it's not a simple matter. Uh, the other tune is called, O oh Nanny, Wilt Thou Gang With Me? <clears throat> and this is a poem by Dr. Percy, uh, and it must have been a fairly famous tune because Dressler also did an arrangement. This particular arrangement is by Soust. Um, and then finally, at the very end, I play uh, a waltz by Strauss that's from the Foster's Social Orchestra and I play all three parts of that. It's an extremely simple piece on the, this Pelube flute. Uh, so just to, to demonstrate some of the characteristics of this, if I play an, uh, an F sharp fingering and an F natural fingering and I don't make any correction, there's just virtually nothing that happens when you add this finger. Um, that is because this hole is very large and that is so that the F sharp is very easy and you don't have to push the F sharp very hard to get it in tune, which you do on a flute like a Baroque flute where you're trying to balance having the F sharp be not too flat and the F natural being not too sharp. So on these flutes, you have to really be quite extreme in your adjustment. much more than you would have to do on a Baroque flute. And frankly, I doubt that um, an American tune flutist would be able or even really care about making that adjustment. The other note that it affects is the high G sharp because that also has this hole open and because that hole is open, that note is sharper than it should be. So that's, that's pretty sharp. Um, it's a little easier to adjust than the F. So, you know, you might think, well, how could that flute be any good? But the, the amazing thing is the response of these instruments, um, all the way from the bottom to the top. sound but with a tremendous amount of focus and you can push the low register a lot the high register is easy to play so it, it's actually really kind of a neat uh, type of instrument and if you're playing the right music on it I think they're quite quite fun um, on the examples besides playing on um, two of these these tune flutes uh, the first thing I play on is this flute by William Whiteley, which is quite an advanced American six key flute, really very beautifully made, um, very rich sound, excellent tuning, um, excellent all over the range of the flute, very, very finely made, beautiful flute. And then I also played on a William Hall and Son four key flute. So this would have been if you were a flute player and you had one of these simple tune flutes and you needed to play an F natural or you wanted to play a nicer G sharp or B flat, this is what you had to buy. You, you bought the keys in order to get those notes to be, to be good. And especially the F key makes a huge difference. Um, so just for the comparison, I played one setting of the piece uh, on this flute. You'll, you'll hear that the, the style of the sound is really pretty similar, whereas the white leaf flute is, is a little bit more, more refined. Finally, uh, near the end, I played the, uh, one of the pieces on my Pelubay Terz flute, which I think is just a wonderful little flute. 
Um, it's also at that same pitch. It has a little better uh, F naturals than these tuned flutes. I think this was actually made to, to be able to play chromatically pretty well in tune. I, I hope you enjoy hearing these, these nice American flutes. <laughs>